Hey guys, so um, a while ago I did a video about various ways that I go about getting my solutions crystal clear before actually precipitating the gold and what we have here as you will see is a really horrifically polluted uh, pregnant chlorooric acid solution so golden solution it's already been uh, denoxed so the excess nitric acid has been uh, converted to sulfuric acid using sulfamic acid and now in the past I would have diluted the solution greatly and then I would let it settle for a day or two and uh, siphon off the clear solution at the top uh, but I figured uh, it's probably a good time to update my techniques a little bit and so what I've been doing for the last while is um, I've got a very simple vacuum filter set up and I thought it might be worthwhile uh, showing you guys how that's going to work so if you bear with me for a second let's uh, get this underway so I'm just going to put this aside for now so we've got about 100 milliliters of a really terribly dirty solution there uh, should contain about three or four grams of gold so that is oops, that is quite a large volume of solution for three or four grams but it's still far smaller than I used to do back in the olden days and so my first big recommendation is to try to make as little waste as possible by using as little acid as you really need to get the job done so that 100 moles already a little bit diluted I probably started with about 50 moles of hydrochloric acid okay just get my gloves off so I'm going to start with a catch container uh, that is just in case we have any spills or breakages and we are going to use a little uh, vacuum flask, a vacuum filter flask, because this is about a 250 mil and with that I'm going to use just a standard uh, everyday kitchen type funnel it's about compared to the size of the 250 mil flask, the funnel is quite big but it is quite light, the nice thing with the vacuum flask is it's got a little bit of heft um, for the source of our vacuum, let me just show you that is going to be a automotive uh, brake bleeding kit so they these automotive kits have the little not sure why we're not focusing there Let me lift things up a little bit yeah it's a little bit unusual all right not sure what's going on with the focus of this but so we've got that little uh, vacuum pump there that is just a manual vacuum pump and the only bit out of this kit we're really going to use is the vacuum pump and one of the bits of hose so we'll get those out and we'll put them aside let's get our filter flask set up back here now the a lot of normal funnels that you buy deliberately try to avoid a, a good seal around the neck so they have these little ribs and you can go ahead and buy the glass type uh, funnel that fits really well into the um, the filter flasks but I prefer to just use the standard system now obviously putting a normal filter paper in this funnel is going to be pointless so what we're going to do is we're going to make a uh, Charmin plug which is a plug of filter material that's going to sit in the the bottom of the funnel here and it will let basically no solution go through up into the point where we have that set up and we apply a little bit of vacuum through here so for the plug today I am going to use the other way standard cheap supermarket uh, non-scented plain white paper towels um, I'm going to grab a couple of sheets like that and then just start folding them a few times over and over and over the idea being that um, when we put that into the funnel we want it to be substantially difficult to to get it through the funnel so we give it a, a twist like that see if I can start getting it there you go so you can see I'm just basically squeezing that as well as rotating it so get as much of it into the funnel as we can so, try 
to pull as much of it through as possible. Obviously the, uh, the tighter you can make this fit in there, the better the whole system is going to work. Um, what you want to try and avoid is to have your spiral too loose so that um, material that you want to try and filter out can actually make its way in a spiral down. Then it's usually a good idea to just use some scissors and chop off any excess down the bottom and in the top you just squish it with your fingers to um, get it really in, into that uh, into that neck of the funnel as tight as you can get it. Okay, now I'll show you how fast this is. So we have already decided that there's going to be not a seal up the top here, which is going to make this whole setup not work particularly well with vacuum. So to create a seal there, I'm just going to use some of this stuff. This is called um, Blue Tack in New Zealand. It's also called Press Tech in other parts of the world. It's basically that um, kind of grey putty type stuff so essentially get rid of that so you're see where I can put this so you guys can see what I'm going to do basically we want to make a we want to make a ring that is the same diameter as the as the inside of our filter flask so that it sits kind of on there like that and then when we grab the funnel and we push on the funnel you will see that it's pushed some of the material into the glass and then we can just go around while squeezing on the top just press on the sides and that's going to make a nice a nice airtight seal okay now that is quite good next step is attach the vacuum pump that one to our hose off camera but that's done and attach the other end of the hose to the filter funnel now I have seen some people do similar things to to this without buying an actual filter flask but the reality is this is about a, a $20 item that will have almost an infinite life as long as you look after it so I wasn't really worried about that so much okay now let's just uh, grab a little bit of water and just wet that down a little bit okay and once again got some water in there now so I'm just squeezing haven't touched any solutions yet so I'll put the gloves on in a second for that but that's looking pretty good and now let me just quickly grab my gloves and then we'll get some solution into there now the idea is going to be to not include not increase the volume of this of the solution too much so I'm going to pour the solution in, let that filter through completely under vacuum and then I will wash it out with water a couple of times so my 100, mil of solu 100 milliliters of solution it's probably going to end up in the let's start looking up there-ish my 100 milliliters of solution is probably going to end up being about 150 or so okay so we've got the solution there get rid of the watch glass these things are terrible I've broken probably about 10 of them over the last couple of years they um, I'm, I must be keeping some watch glass factory in business so be careful of those just going to give the thermometer a spray down there, make sure none of the solution track over with the thermometer. Okay, now I'm going to pour the solution in. You see there it's, um, some really horrific looking stuff, I'm just going to Give that I um, spray like that. Okay. Now you will notice we've got solution up here. Nothing yet filtering through. The vacuum pump, as you will see, has no vacuum yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pumping. Initially, what I'm doing is I'm pumping all the air out of the system, but 
pretty soon all the air will be gone and you will start drawing a vacuum. Now I have decided to limit, the, limit this to about one inch of mercury for no particular reason and as you will see if you look there um, some solution is starting to work its way through that plug um, quite slowly at this point but once it works its way through uh, things will speed up a bit. Now at this point I know a lot of people are concerned that they're going to be sitting there um, squeezing the vacuum pump all day. Uh, I'm not quite sure what they're doing wrong but they are doing something wrong. I suspect that they've got problems with their ceiling up here because I can basically do those few squeezes and realistically there's no leaks in the system so the vacuum's not going to go anywhere so that's going to stay pretty much right there so I can put this down um, in a few minutes, oh, let's say 10 minutes, maybe 15, I'm going to have to come back and give that a few more pumps but um, that's not really that big a problem it only takes two or three pumps and as you will see we have now got some solution coming through the filter there um, you, you will notice that it's dripping quite slowly but the key here is that the solution is coming out very 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 clean um, obviously the solution has already had time to cool which means that any uh, salts that can stay in a warm solution but are going to come out when it cools are already precipitated out and they should be filtered out no problem. So I, um, I think probably the best bit at this point is if I line that up a little bit better is I will set this on time lapse and it can just sit here and filter just for your reference it is now exactly 8 o'clock 8 p.m. here so I so we can have a look at how long it basically takes to filter this hundred milliliters of solution but <coughs> this is not really something that I have to sit here for it can just it can just do its thing until it's finished and um, as I said I'll have to come by every 15 minutes or so and give this uh, pump a few squeezes but you'll see in the time that I've spent talking it's not really gone down substantially it'll just um, it'll just basically sit there holding its vacuum because there's no air leaks in the system so yeah I'll uh, put it on time lapse a bit and um, be back when we're finished with this and I uh, think we might uh, do a, a live precipitation on camera okay talk to you guys later Okay, so definitely not my most exciting video so far. So it's about 10 o'clock now, so um, a couple of hours have gone past and I probably pop by once every 40 minutes or so to um, to give the vacuum pump a few squeezes. Now you'll see, it's if I uh, get a bit of vacuum going again now, um, I've, I've filled it up, so we're at about 200 milliliters of solution now, so I have um, diluted this substantially uh, to wash any excess solution out of the, the paper and, the, and the, the, the kind of remaining junk up above. And what we have here is a very nice clear solution. Um, I'll see if I can get a bit of illumination in there. It's kind of hard to illuminate that's probably giving you some idea of the clarity of the solution so what I'll quickly do um, so that that pretty much rounds off the, the whole concept of a, a simple cheap effective vacuum filter system and so what we'll quickly do now is um, I know that we're probably looking at about three to four grams of gold in there so I will measure out uh, 8 grams of sodium metabisulfite and we'll just add that in the dry form and see if we can see a nice reaction to round off this night. So I'll just uh, get this over to a beaker and uh, we'll give that a go. Okay, so I've got the uh, solution transferred to the beaker. I've got a bit of back illumination and I'm just going to slowly add the 8 grams of sodium metabisulfite. I prefer to add this as a, um, a solid powder at the the time just because it doesn't actually increase the amount of solution because basically the more solution you end up with the more waste you're going you're going to have to treat okay so um, we've got it in there Let's clean 
that out. And what we'll do is give it a quick stir. And hopefully we should see a bit of a reaction happening there. Not super fast, but as you can see, we are uh, going quite brown there. Okay. What's the best view? How about back there, something like that. And that's pretty much it for the uh, for the precipitation. I can already see a little bit of uh, kind of uh, gold floating at the top there, and I would guess that um, the gold in this is going to drop relatively quickly, seeing as it's uh, quite concentrated. And um, yeah, should be a, a reasonably clean solution. There was it was obviously green because there's a little bit of copper in there with the gold. But uh, yeah, look forward to seeing how this goes. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this little video and um, good luck and be safe.